If you're looking for Broadway's biggest stars and shows, you have come to the right place. It's the Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Well-behaved princesses rarely make history. It's Once Upon a One More Time, the brand new musical powered by the pop hits of Britney Spears. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Thanks, Tamsin. The music of Britney Spears is now on Broadway in Once Upon a One More Time. I'm sitting down with Prince Charming himself, Justin Guarini, at the Secret Garden at the Civilian. Justin, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm tired. You're I'm tired? happy. Yeah. Well, um, you know, actually, you're doing a lot of choreography. <laughs> I mean, I think of you as a pop star, but oh, that's nice. the that's choreography cool. yeah. is intense. It is. Uh, and I say tired like, you know, it's, it's the first world problem. It's a great thing, problem to have. Like, I'm on Broadway and I'm exhausted, right? Like, the work that we do in this show is so intense. And the choreography by Keone and Mari Madrid and, uh, I mean, it is... I didn't know that I could do it, but I asked for it. Cause they gave me like choreography in the beginning that was like really cool. Yeah. But I saw what their dancers from their company who are now in our company were doing. And I was like, but I'm, I wanna do that. And they're like, really? I said, yeah. I think this is by far the most dancing I've ever done ever. Like not even on the American Idol tour, like none of that. Like it, it is awesome. And I feel so good doing it. So you are in Once Upon a One More Time. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we're dealing with the songs of Britney Spears, yes. which we all love, yeah. and a completely original story. Mm -hmm. And you are Prince Charming, naturally. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> like I put that on there? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's interesting. I've been with the show for six years. Uh -huh. And over the past six years, whenever I tell anybody about this show, they're like, S -s oh, you're in the Britney Spears musical. So. Uh, are you playing Timberlake or Federline? I'm like, no, <laughs> it's not about her life. And I think that's something that's really beautiful and unique about this jukebox musical, right? It has nothing, by her direction, it has nothing to do with her life. It is this brand new, unique story which takes uh, themes and characters that we know and love and just flips them on their head. Do you have any uh, personal history with Britney? I do, yeah. I first met Britney when I was doing a press junket for from Justin and Kelly many years ago. We were filming. Fantastic in, movie musical, by the way. Big, big you. part of my, uh, my viewing experience. We're you gonna, would be surprised. This, it was hard for me to not make this entire interview about from Justin and <laughs> Kelly and its Broadway prospects. Oh, let me tell you, that, that's, a, that's a step too far. But I will say that more people come up to me in the, uh, um, at the stage door when I'm autographed and like hand me the DVD to be signed and tell me how much that they loved it. And although it wasn't commercially successful, it was such a fun thing to do. Yeah, of Especially considering I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and yet, you know, I made sure that I knew enough that I didn't know what I was doing. And so I hung out in Video Village and I listened to what the director was doing and I listened to what the producers were doing. I would hang out with the cameramen and be like, how does that work? What is that? I'm pulling focus, what does that mean? And I learned as much as I possibly could. It feels like you could be whatever part of me. Fast forward to when I was doing the press junket for from Justin to Kelly and my uh, management rep came in and said, hey, Britney Spears is in the room across the hallway. Would you like to see her? And I was like, of course, me and me, like, yes. And so I walk into the room and it's this beautiful palatial suite. And there is this just sweet, kind, lovely, demure person sitting in the middle of the room. And we just hang out and we talked and she couldn't have been kinder and nicer. And it was just like, hey, how are you? And you know, in the back of my, my head, I'm thinking, what is my life? Like I'm standing here with Britney Spears. And like, even though I had, you know, been on TV and done all that stuff, um, it was a surreal moment to me. And then every six or seven years, I seem to see her somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right, it was on the red carpet many years later at that point when you know, I was doing stuff and hosting for TV Guide Network. And then many years later when she came to the workshop for uh, Once Upon a One More Time. Okay. Right, she came and she saw it, she loved it, she approved it and that was what helped us move forward. So was it fun to get to sing these songs to her face in a rehearsal room? Yeah, it was because she 
was pleasantly surprised at how we wove them into sure. the story. She said, hey, I want this story to be about, you know, fairies and butterflies and not my life and, and this something beautiful using my music. And then she got to see that manifest and we had some great, great people, some who's who's uh, singing in that workshop. And I think we really put together something gorgeous that she loved and she was excited and she was like a little kid in a candy store. Yeah. And then from that moment on, she was like, yes, I love it, let's keep going. The show itself is something that is, yes, jukebox musical, utilizing her music, but it also has this gorgeous empowerment and kind of flipping the narrative that we all think we know yeah. about these fairy tales. Um, and even about masculinity and, and uh, femininity, like on its head. Yeah. And I think that, you know, she has blazed so many trails in her life and in her career. And then to see a musical that has the opportunity to do that as well, that leveraging her journey and I mean, really a lot of her sacrifice is pretty beautiful. You're always good on Broadway, and I do feel like people are always surprised because when you yeah. when you when you enter people's minds as one thing. Yes. Even though I know you originally chose American Idol over The Lion King, yeah. over Broadway, right? Yes. So, so from the very beginning, Broadway was uh, part of your story. Oh yes, as far back as I can remember. I mean, that was something I've always wanted to do. And I had gone to uh, school for it, University of the Arts, and studied musical theater. I was going that way and and auditioned for this little show called The Lion King that came yeah, into town, show. you know, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, here, come do these master classes. And I was like, okay, what are those? And came up to New York with my mom, like, you know, and did these master classes and they said, ah, we don't quite have the, the role for you right yet, the space for you, but we want you in this show. And I said, okay, years and years and years go by. I keep auditioning as we do and just stay on their mind. And then all of a sudden this show comes out of nowhere that no one ever heard of called American Idol. And I have to make this choice. Right. And I'm in LA and things are going well. And I call over uh, to the Lion King and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna try this. Please keep me in mind for the future. And and yes, people are surprised. Yeah. It's like there are certain people of a certain age who know me from American Idol. There's a certain people of a certain age who uh, know me as Lil Sweet from the Dr. Pepper commercials. There's a certain people of a certain age who know me from Broadway. There's gonna now be a certain people of a certain age who know me as Cat Burglar from the Super Kitties on Disney Junior. It's a blessing, I would say, because I can show up and do what I do. Yeah. And it surprises people, which is like, Awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like well, that's yeah, and it's fun for me. Look at what you've been able to do on Broadway. Your credits are very impressive. You yeah, want to do chronological? Sure, because it feels like being thrown in at the deep end. Yeah. Because I started in Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown with Patty Lapone yes. playing my mother. Brian Stokes Mitchell I know. was my dad. Sherry Renee Scott, Laura Benanti. I mean, I so I many know. of the Danny Burstein. I mean, yeah. so many of the who's who's. And I'm you like got thrown into, the thrown into yeah. it. Everyone, really, but especially Patty. She took me under her wing. She was so sweet to me, and she taught me so much about about uh, the the culture mm. of that class of Broadway folks. Yeah. How you ask for things from another actor, how you treat one another in the space. You know, she said, hey, look, make sure you remember every single one of these crew members' names in this theater. Because in six months when you need something, hey, you is not gonna cut it. She is a class act and she helped to teach me how to be a leader in this community. And then, so I think from there I went to Wicked? Oh, no, that was no, American no, Idiot. Wicked, American that was Idiot. American Idiot, yeah, yeah. that was it. And so you go from this, you know, very highbrow Lincoln yeah, yeah. Center, Pedro Almodovar film, yes, right, yeah. to like Green Day, which is yeah. no less impressive, yeah. but like on the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. And Punk I, rock extravaganza. Oh yeah, and it's like me and the kids, and I still was I a kid at that point, I felt like a kid anyway. And so it was so wild because I go from doing this very highbrow thing to like literally Stephen Hoggett choreography, right. like it was wild and, yeah. and working with Billy Joe Armstrong and <laughs> from being this thing to a drug using couch surfing guy. Yeah. And it was what, flat ironing my hair every single night. And so it was this sort of whiplash back and forth and I loved it and it was exhausting, but it was what I needed. Mm. You know, after that, that feeling of like failure from the first show yeah. not working, yeah, yeah. it was a great way to work out my anger. Yeah. And uh, then from there, The biggest the musical, wicked? well, theater, wicked. I think. Yeah, you did the wicked. biggest Broadway yeah, musical ever, Wicked. wicked. Yeah. I mean, you got to be in the biggest Broadway 
musical ever. And like to be in the Gershwin Theater, which is at least 1,600 seats, at yes, least, right? At if least, not more. Yeah, at not least. more. Yeah, at least 1,600 <laughs> seats, right? It's massive. To play an iconic role for a sold out audience. Every night. Every Excited night. Excited audience. Wanting every to night. come see, I mean, like, right? You don't have to prove anything right. to anyone. And, and then to be able to do that choreography and to uh, understand that, like, hey, I can be a leading man, but the show is not about me. Right. The show is about yeah, the women, sure. right? They're working. I mean, there's one point where as Fierro, I could go out, I would do my thing, and then before the intermission, I like got into a robe, made myself some tea, like hung out, took a nap, intermission, got up, ate some food. You took a nap got during the show? Yes, that's how long he sits. It was wild. He was napping during Yo, Act One. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. That's how much, to their credit, that right. that 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 the, that the women are out there, that the witches are out there, because whoo. And it was weird for me because I never had the opportunity to go out and shout da 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 and then sit, and then go da da, da and that's it was a, a, a challenging role in that sense, where it's like yeah. I had to yeah. be on yeah. and then be way then off. Be sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I could sleep and then get up and then uh, go and, and do the show. It was wild, so wild. And, it's and just, then you got to do Shakespeare. Yes, and Romeo that was Julia. when, yeah, yeah, with you know Orlando Bloom and Condola Rashad, and again another who's who cast. Again another thing that was not commercially successful, but was something that's so special to me because my wife and I, our favorite story is Romeo and Juliet. My ring has the this is the Baz Luhrmann R and J oh. ring, like, and so you know it was really gorgeous and and special for me to be able to play Paris and to find humor in yeah. that role and, and to do my first bra. Cause like, I don't know if you know, but it's like almost impossible to get cast in a play. There are this many plays and this many people trying to get into them. Yeah. And then the fact that I was cast in that is is beyond an honor and, I, and that doesn't escape me. So, uh, and then it's Shakespeare on top of that. Here's what I find interesting. So let me just recap quickly. So you you did Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, a yeah. very A-list, highbrow show. Wild. You did American Idiot, a punk rock extravaganza. Yes. So you got to play Fiero in the biggest Broadway That's musical so ever, cool. Wicked. Then you got to do Shakespeare. Yes. And now you're in the Britney Spears musical. And in some ways, this is the most obvious thing for you to do out of all of this. Well, you forgot one, In Transit. Oh, In Transit, which was the acapella, the acapella, acapella musical. musical right? which then was... you did a musical where there was literally no no musicians. Yeah. The music, it was all in your mouth. All the you voice. Guys all... Everything No we napping exhausted. and In Transit. I, no, no napping and In Transit. <laughs> I, I just feel so fortunate to be a part of this community because of all the things that I've gotten to do around this is like home base for me. Yeah. This is the place where I feel most accepted, I feel most cared for, I feel the most ability to just show up and shine and do what I love to do.